Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bali. Welcome to ITVA. My name is Absaline Hehakaya, and I'm head of cinema here at the Bali, which means that uh, I get to curate the films that we screen here on a daily basis, which, for your information, are year-round documentaries. So films that are selected for ITVA, but also for other festivals. Films that you don't get to see at the festival, we screen them. Um, but also, we get to, uh, work to I get to work together with ITVA. There are two more seats over there. <laughs> Don't worry, it's a full house. You couldn't make me happier now. <laughs> so I get to curate the program um, at the Bali for ITVA. And uh, this is the final night of what we call double bills. Two films, two documentaries, back to back, um, that weren't related before, but have been related through a mutual theme. And tonight, um, we're going to uh, look at two films that revolve around the slogan, The Boys Are Not Okay. The first film was Infinite Football, and the second film, Minding the Gap, uh, is, uh, is also really beautiful and interesting. But I wrote something down because it's the final day of ITVA. This is my ninth program with discussions and music and everything. So please forgive me that I need to read it from my paper. The boys are not okay. I imagine that being a man is not always easy, and that becoming a man might be even less so. This double bill focuses on masculinity in the 21st century, where the road to manhood is paved with broken boy dreams. Rigid ideals of masculinity stand in the way for boys to grow up and become happy human beings. With these two films, we will investigate how we can prevent masculinity from becoming a zero sum game. And in this film, there are many, many ways in which we can investigate that theme. Or as the characters in the film say, we have to grow up and it's gonna suck. Or as you read on one of the skateboards, this device cures the heartache. Yeah, it's heartbreaking already. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna watch and, and, and see if I'm not the only one crying tonight. Um, after the film, there will be a, a panel talk, which, will I, uh, will, which will, won't be moderated by me. It will be moderated by Patrick van der Heide. And it's an all-male panel, especially for tonight, uh, with the most sweetest and most intelligent men I could find, which are uh, intercultural psychiatrist Glenn Helberg and uh, Lucky Fons III, singer-songwriter. And um, this is the end of the program now, and I can sh tell you then that the music is going to happen at the end. So I hope you will all stay for that. So for now, enjoy this final uh, double bill screening. And uh, I hope to uh, join you in conversation after the film. Thank you. So, welcome back in the light. Um, I'm Patrick van der Heide. I will be hosting uh, the after talk with um, psychiatrist Glenn Helberg. <laughs> and singer songwriter uh, Lucky Fons III. <laughs> there he is again. So, <laughs> please take a seat. Um, so, a rock star and a psychiatrist. I think these are the best possible men to um, look back at this uh, film. Um, we'll be talking for um, 20 minutes, uh, half an hour, uh, also depending on um, the questions uh, you have. Um, quite a trip, this movie, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, yes, it was, yeah. And I was thinking while watching it, mm -hmm. Why did I use my evening like this <laughs> well, while my whole day is already filled with this? <laughs> because, that's it, uh, because that's what it is. This, these are your clients in a way. Not only these people, but what's going on. That's what I, ha that's what I have to deal with. Mm -hmm. I will answer your questions. 
But uh, the whole time I'm thinking, I'm thinking about all the traumas that are that happened with these boys, mm -hmm. and the, the the whole time I was thinking about the emotional brain that was being damaged, mm -hmm. and so. Um, Yes, it was quite, I thought it was quite hard to look at. Yes. Because I was very impressed f by the filmmaker. I really thought that he did a great job putting everybody so vulnerable and at the same time um, so close. Yeah. And, um, but this is real life and mm. that's what he showed us. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about. This is real life. Every now, every t every day, I see that we don't realize enough. That we don't bring up children. We're not educating children. We're educating the adults for tomorrow, of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So um, I was looking at what was happening with the child, the little one, and in the movie mm -hmm. itself, they asked themselves, and Zach also ex asked himself, what is going to become of my child. Yeah. There's also, uh, um, he also expressed powerlessness uh, in the side of having to raise this kid. It was actually quite shocking in a way. It was shocking, yeah. it was shocking. And I thought if you look at the movie, not the inhalts, not the, the, mm -hmm. the continent, but, the con but I thought it was so beautiful that the filmmaker showed the adults, the boys growing up, and at mm -hmm. the same time that little kid. <laughs> yeah. So. But I, I, I thought that was beautiful as well. The, but the, the, but the f yeah, the, f the film ties like their their different stories together, like the 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 the, the, the stories of abuse, and uh, there's like an artistic way of showing that abuse is a, almost a, a viral thing. It's hereditary. Uh, that's what yeah. it suggests. It's like it, you know, it's passed over. And and um, I I think the filmmaker did a beautiful job in showing that that, that this is something that that mo it's like a ghost that moves between people. Mm. You know, it's not it's not a, a a thing that occurs. It's actually it goes back way ages. It has a history, a prehistory, and of course the bitter thing about this movie is that I mean. It's hardly a happy end, right? I mean, you're, 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 you're so worried about this mm -hmm. might be passed over from generation to generation. Uh, hardly a, a happy end. Yeah. Do you agree, Glenn? Do I agree? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the, move, the, the, the documentary gave hope mm -hmm. because suddenly we saw Zach with his uh, haircut trying to, do, to make <laughs> something out of his life. The haircut gave a bit of hope. Sorry? The haircut gave a bit of hope. Yes, bec because um, after that we saw that his life changed. Yeah. And um, because we see that he, I think, he f with drinking, he was trying to, to say that, verdolven, suppress yeah. all his pain. Because he, was, he was excellent in analyzing what was happening to him. Did Sorry, once more. He was excellent in analyzing what was happening to him. Yes, so that's the thing. He knew. He knew it. He knew, he knew it all. Well, that's the thing about the brain. We have this cognitive brain, and we have the emotional brain. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when the emotional brain, when it really, when the pain goes there, we see that the, the cognitive brain is being really shut out. He's. He really. T he told us even. I know that I'm not supposed to hit women, but. Then, when she does this and this and this, that moment when he beats her, in theory we say then the cognitive brain, the frontal cortex, mm -hmm. to be precise, it's like it's being shut out. Yeah. So it means you can analyze, but at the same time, how do you combine the emotional brain and the cognitive brain and the body? And so that's what we see he's not able. Yeah. And if we go deeper in theory, if you want that later, I can do that. <laughs> but I really saw what was happening, what we know about what's happening when we have this traumatic brain. Yeah. And he really analyzed it, but the thing is he couldn't, he couldn't do Change anything it. with it. No, no, no. Of course the point to skating is that it's such a physical activity, it takes so much you know, physical nuance and, 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 and uh, effort and practice that I mean, the, the, the body is the one thing that can override your own mind. So yeah. if you're, I mean, if you're, if your mind is in trouble, then I can totally, you know, 
to them it's 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 like obvious from a very young age that, yeah. that skating is not so much i mean skating it's, is it's the way out it's therapeutic as best but it's uh, at the very least it's um it's a almost a self-medication thing or or maybe escapism at the very least yeah, yeah. Do, 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 does does that work skating as self-therapy yes because i just said we have the emotional brain the cognitive brain and the body yeah and well, with the text which um, which we we read, yeah. skating is the of the pain. This this, this item uh, this cures item. heartbreak. Yes, yeah. cures. And it's, yeah. that's that item gave them the chance because the, if the body we have this we have three brains, three parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. We also have the reptile brain, mm -hmm. and there where the pain is, if you move, you know, um, that's very important. Yeah. A lot of a lot of therapeutic possibilities are moving we even know that when people move a lot when they do a lot of exercises even when your brain is traumatic if, 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 mm. if there's something traumatic go going there one of the ways to heal indeed is the body and moving yeah but it's i mean but it, it, i mean it's it it, it it's kind of to, it's kind of two-sided their relationship as well because I mean in this movie the skating is also like something that is associated with the escapism and the youth and not not wanting to grow up and at the same time it's like cell it's a self-healing thing so mm -hmm. I mean they're they're aware that's you know that that's that's a complex thing as well yeah. because I mean that his drinking is sort of associated is close to that act of skating and it's the same it's a similar kind of es escapism yeah. to, to him but at the same time, we see that uh, that part of escapism, we see that they start being a family together. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that was also yes, part of, of course, it, yes. because there was also a lot of um, liefde, a lot of love yeah, and yeah. camaraderie. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, friendship. Friendship. Was... And, we, and I think that's very important, because that was the, in, the, in the craftsmanship of the skating and, being and, and, and looking at each other and seeing how they appreciated each other. That's also part of healing because there are people who love you. For sure. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So it's, it was not only escapism, but it's also with the healing with the body, but also trying to make a family. And that's also what we saw that Zach tried to do, mm. bringing his kid to the boys, to the hood. Yeah. 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 Time to integrate him in that part of his life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it seemed to work out because we see Zach all the time with the pajamas with skate on it and his little board so that <laughs> there's a skating future for a little Elliot so let's um, let's analyze this friendship this special friendship B friendship between men is always about telling stories to each other I don't know if you recognize this but this is what they do all the all the time and the film itself also is a story um, but I find it intriguing that um, only in the last scene uh, the filmmaker said um, to um, to care uh, what the rationale behind the film was, namely uh, uh, looking for healing of his own traumas, and and uh, that um, I was he's, surprised. He's he's stunned by it as well. It, yeah, it, I mean it only dawns on him as well at that yeah. very moment, uh, and uh, at that point he must have been filming for years already. What I mean, an interesting friendship is that. You know, they're very close. They skate all the time. They. Um, they're in mortal danger <laughs> uh, all the time together. And yet this one thing they don't tell each other. Does that have to do with the theme of tonight, masculinity and the way males, men um, uh, interact or have friendship? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and, and let's say this. If we look at what we do ourselves, a lot of what we do, if it's not escapism or whatever we do, when we do a job or we do things in our jobs, in our daily things we do, we also try to heal something. So um, in my job, for instance, they say psychologists and psychiatrists, they uh, do a lot to heal. But I also think that artists, when they do that, there's a part of trying to do something with the emotional body and see what you can do. But for sure. Huh? And then we have this thing about manhood. And uh, the interesting thing, if we look at manhood, is that you see that in the end, because they say, we all know that people say men don't cry. Mm. And in the end, we see that the filmmaker really puts in the end the crying. So it's as if he's trying to tell us, you know, there is hope because they're connecting with their feelings. 
and by connecting with their feelings, perhaps they can heal. Mm -hmm. And he himself, when his mother started crying, you saw they were all trying not mm -hmm. to cry. Even I was trying not to cry, mm -hmm. so, and uh, not mm -hmm. trying to cry. And in the end, we saw these tears. Yeah. But this, this movie has so much layers, you know? It's Incredible, about, yeah. it, It's about the manhood, of course. It's about the upbringing, how, what, how we deal with, um, with, uh, ma with boys and girls. Because the interesting part is also the, the, the role of the girls. But then on uh, the other side, also amb not ambivalency. Mm -hmm. Ambivalence. Yeah. Uh, race and ambivalency. Yeah. You know, people can hate you and still you love them. Yeah. So I hate you, you say in the end I hate you. And in that hate, it's so complicated yeah. because at the same time you say he he did that because he loved me yeah. so we see so much complex things in what feelings are doing in his movie and then especially indeed manhood yeah, yeah. So. yeah because also i mean your question about the, the like you, you know you're being surprised it's like oh did like why don't they talk about these things and so but also yeah i mean i mean the, the it's a very tender moment huh, where he kind of like, uh, he, he, you know, the, the moment you just decide, the filmmaker describes like, I made this movie to make sense of my own trauma. I'm filming your trauma to make sense of, sense of mine. And, uh, and his reaction, he's stunned by it and he's also very moved by it. He yeah. says, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. So, you know, that's real, it's a real, real friendship. But also, like, it's such a vulnerable mo moment, you know? And mm -hmm. in that way, it's also like a very non-masculine uh, moment as well because that, that moment of being tender towards each other, like, uh, in being honest and being, and being really, they're, they're both very aware, I mean, maybe they haven't talked about it, but they're immediately aware of the, 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 the you know the preciousness of that no, of, that, of that thing, and so, yeah. I think that's that's, uh, yeah. What, what, you, sorry. Yeah, what I what I I just now realized when you say it's not really like uh, a very masculine moment is that I'm actually disappointed when you say that. Why can't we have these moments? Why do they have to be female? Why can't can they be? Mm. Well, well, that, well that's an excellent also? question. I mean, that's a, that's a very good question. And then that, that the answer to that is, is like, very, it's, it's super complicated. I, you know, I ask myself the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this is, I mean, the, I mean, that's the world we, that we live in, right? Because you're supposed to, I mean, it's funny, you just introduced me as a rock star well, well, <laughs> up on stage, but it says there a singer songwriter. And the, the funny thing is that the, the notion surrounding I was playing the, around. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's but the mm. notion surrounding those mm. uh, those two words, sing a mm. songwriter, are almost like diametrically opposite of each other. And you can really sort of almost all of the the association you have with the word sing a songwriter and the word rockstar, mm. that you can you can almost fit them in the same bag. You can write those words on the wall, and then everybody would say, okay, that's feminine, mm -hmm. the singer-songwriter words, and yeah. that's masculine, yeah. you know. Uh, so uh, even, you know, uh, I mean, all, all, almost all of it is, well, uh, what would be the word, but um, um, especially when it comes to emotion, it's, so, it's almost like our whole way of thinking about that is, is, is gendered and is colored by our ideas about gender. I mean, you're. I mean, I mean, silly to me if you say I'm a rock star. <laughs> Not, I mean, I am a rock star anyway. But, you know, <laughs> but it's like I, I mean, you know, like somebody could look at me and say, "Look, okay, that maybe that's a rock star." Mm -hmm. But it's like it, the word rock star to me, and it's sort of, like, it, it's like an, it's like a, almost a cliche, almost a character of what, of a male sort of dominant yeah. kind of figure. And you know, if I think about myself, I feel like I'm quite the opposite. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's funny to me. I'm not. I, I'm not taking. Uh, you know, I'm not bashing you. But it's just like it's interesting that you use. It works. Uh, out I know. In, I know you in, in, use in, the word in, It's in everything. This whole. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying yeah. that even if you can even look at, at a, such a beautiful moment in film, in that without having that, you know, with, with, with without seeing it in that yeah. light. Yeah. And, is it, it's, is and it? it's intersectional, like you said. It's about, I mean, it's about, you know, it ties in with all the ideas, that, like ideas, you know, she's, we have about race, you know, we have about fathership, and about, yeah. even about our bodies. And, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about fatherhood for one, for one moment. Is it, 
uh, is there a risk? You, you, you see a lot of young men. Um, do you think there's a there's a there's a recipe to be a good father in these in these times? You know, this movie was also a lot about fathers and sons. Yeah. Right? That's uh, so. If you want to talk about it, I think that it's really important because one of the things I say when you there, there is this thing of how do I re relate to my manhood, and at the si same time, how do I relate to my fatherhood? And if in your father, in if relating to your manhood. If you're not able to deal with emotions, what will happen then with um, your fatherhood? And we we saw in this movie between the lines that one of the one of the languages that was spoken by these dads was hitting. And talking about how the men behaved before, we saw they were really, you know, rough playing. Mm -hmm. So, and by rough playing, you always sh you show I'm not gay. Because the free, one of the first words in the movie was being gay. And gay means feminine, but it means having emotions. Mm -hmm. As soon as a man shows emotions, it means that he's gay. So um, if we would do like this, then it would be a gay thing. But it could also be something out of uh, manhood. Mm -hmm. But the moment you do this, I'm sure... That was it's very manhood. masculine of you. This yeah. is man. Yeah. This is masculine. <laughs> then I'm sure we cannot cross that border because we showed yeah. each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so, but from That's this, good. from this, by doing this with your mm -hmm. with your friends, mm -hmm. we see suddenly if you have this. Thing, do I hurt you? No, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> When no. I do this, I really feel <laughs> muscle. So. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. It's be, uh, yeah. <laughs> but we see this thing that if you do that with your friends, it's it's almost and Sek tried. Sek mm -hmm. really, I love that Sek really tried to be your father. Yeah. And we, I saw the love, I saw the caring, and then it it happened again. Yeah. Something happened in which the mother, I don't know what happened, mm -hmm. but we saw this old thing happening again. This father starting loving his kid, giving him kisses change the diaper, yeah. and then that same thing happens again. The father leaves, or the mother leaves with the kid, and the father says, I only see my kids three days, three, three times a week. Yeah. In that moment, we know he didn't cry, but it hurt. Yeah. And very often we don't see, and the men themselves, they don't know that they're so hurt. So if we talk about uh, fathers and sons, I think one of the most important things is is and that's why I'm talking about the emotional brain. How are we going to be? How are we going to deal with that? Because even women don't really like men. If you don't agree, let's talk about it. <laughs> very no, I'm I'm serious <laughs> because very often I've heard and I've seen that when men start getting emotional, women don't really like that mm -hmm. because they want a man. Mm -hmm. And so it's not only you cannot be a man on your own. It's always interaction. So if the woman asks something of you, mm -hmm. you will answer in a certain way. Yeah. And that thing keeps going on. Yeah. This weekend, for instance, it, it, st it starts now, but this whole weekend I will be busy. We will be busy making a documentary about toxic masculinity. So we have with the director, with Sonny Bergman, we have about 50 men in which we're going to deal with these things. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to understand how these men relate to their, um, their emotions, how do they relate to their fathers, how do they relate to their mothers and to the body. Mm -hmm. So we're trying, we're going to try like what happened in this movie, mm -hmm. to, to bring something with these men and we hope, as this movie is trying to do, mm -hmm that we, we really continue this thing because this whole thing about at this moment that men are afraid that, they're, that they have to be, they have to grab they're their losing manhood, they're losing yeah. something. Yeah. They're not losing anything. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to learn something mm. because the moment you ask a man to do something with the emotions, they think you're trying to take them, their manhood away mm -hmm. and you don't take something away. You just add something, something that is not man or woman, but it is human. And in your humanness, you can relate to your manhood or womanhood. Okay. When, you, when's the documentary out? 
uh, 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 Next uh, Itva. <laughs> well, uh, March. March. Oh, March. she already knows. Oh, March. Of course, she knows. Yeah. Yeah. One thing about uh, uh, about um, uh, again about this rock star thing because Glenn said um, you you can't play a man on your own. You, uh, it's always in a, it's, al it's, al it's yeah. also in relation. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, is there so what's 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 the attraction of the lucky fonts persona? Then. Well, uh, I think it's sort of uh, in, in, a, in a kind of broader way, like let, let's take the singer-songwriter uh, mm -hmm. idea, and um, you like the, the singer-songwriter up. If you go up on stage, say like I'm a singer-songwriter, right? The expectations of you are all of these things. You you get to be, you're actually uh, applauded for exactly those things that are actual that actual men shouldn't be doing outside of the stage. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, um, you're so sensitive. Being, no, my, no, I would say being vulnerable, mm -hmm. vulnerable, being coy, being whimsical, mm -hmm. being uh, being uh, as honest as you can get, mm -hmm. and being being tender, and 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 all all of these, all of these things that 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 could somehow be. Mm -hmm. that are simply not considered masculine mm -hmm. and uh, this is one of the things that attracted me to this line of work it's mm -hmm. one of the field i always thought i look up the guy up on stage and see that man is like man he gets to do everything he even gets to not be a man yeah. do you know what <laughs> i mean he even gets yeah. to be like a, yeah. a he, he you know he gets a, he gets to look like a like a wuss or maybe a, a pussy or mm -hmm. a, do you know mm -hmm. to use a word like that a watcha? yeah and uh, he gets to look like that, and he, and and the women still love him for yeah. it. As, as you know, that's the weird thing. Also, yeah. I mean, of course, like the. the Do you have a model in, in that in that respect? In, in that respect, uh, another artist who does this trick excellently. I mean, it's 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 not a. I wouldn't say it's a trick. I mean, you know, no, what's, I'm sorry. what's obvious. Yeah. I mean, I mean, a lot of uh, music stars were kind of like were were. were strange from the norm like rock and roll stars the early rock and roll stars were queer mm -hmm. if you think about like uh, um, little richard you know he's yeah. not i mean he's he's both black and white he's both men and women his makeup he's, and he's, his, he's, yeah. he's, he's queer but also mm -hmm. and straight as well and it i mean music has always been a, a kind of a, a sort of like a spot where people are not just allowed to be um, different from the norm even expected to it's like I mean, it's a, mm -hmm. so I thought, okay, that's where I need to be, yeah. because it, it's so you know, it's an identity thing yeah. as well. You know, I romanticize that yeah. stuff, and I, to me, it's always the, the most interesting artist who, um, you know, I mean, who also have a kind of a persona. I don't know if I have that for myself, but I, you know, I I try to not be conscious about that mm -hmm. because the moment you do, of course, it becomes theater. It becomes interesting. Then, it, then it becomes I mean, a trick. It yeah. becomes interesting yeah. if yeah. you're if you if you can be able to be your actually weird self up on stage <laughs> without even having to think about it. <laughs> uh, you know, that that's always been my <laughs> idea. Okay. Really know? looking forward to your yeah, song and, in and five minutes. And, yeah. one of, and one of the things <laughs> is that you don't have to um, you don't have to uh, think about. Um, you you, you 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 get away with it. You're applauded. Actually, the song I'm gonna sing, mm -hmm. uh, which I was picked uh, picked for uh, tonight, is called Jongens. Mm -hmm. So boys, you know, it's obvious. It, I mean, it's intentionally a generic title, boys. Mm -hmm. And um, the story about uh, well, I'll introduce what the story about is. But but the chorus has a kind of a, like a funny, but it's also bitter conclusion about boys. Mm -hmm. um, I'll sing in the Dutch so I can sort of give it away in English now. Mm -hmm. so, but but it's basically like it basically just says like boys are losers and boys are boys are like girls but without the the luck, <laughs> without the good things, you know. And so it's 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 kind of bitter and it's comical as so, well. But even when I sing it, people still get pissed off of it. It's like a <laughs> rile if you have these kind of macho people in the crowd. Sometimes people still get riled. They go like. <laughs> you know, like he thinks he's funny or something, you know, and it's yeah. because it's unclear if I'm if I'm being funny or whether if I'm being provocative or if I'm if I'm just being yeah. like that's your prerogative like as bitter, an artist, bitterly, yeah. uh, bitter or, or or and and I really just at saying that, young sign for losers, for losers mm. stuck for stuck, mm -hmm. boys are losers, every mm. one of them. Just saying that it really riles. Boys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they want. Um, what's the man? The name of the man? Jordan. The the, the, the guy who is uh, the professor who is 
trying to... Oh, Jordan voice. Peterson. Jordan Peterson. Yeah. You know, there is one thing I want to add, and mm -hmm. that is... What's his name? Er, um, the black guy? Kier. 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 I thought Kier was a beautiful character. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful character. Yeah. The filmmaker also put him there as a black man, but he didn't... This boy wasn't the, the caricature of black man. No. And um, he he showed that this guy was really trying the whole time to get in contact with himself. And uh, also that he silently, he was working and suddenly he had a car. <laughs> and, uh, and at the same time, they were, they were uh, referring to what was, was happening in the United States and also here with racism. Right. And he tried, you saw, it, it was beautiful, you saw the silence in him. Because how can I deal with racism with my friends? And that was something that, that really got into me. Because sometimes you don't have words for the racism which is there. And still, you want to be successful. And then he says his father was there. And his father told him, in the end, you will be black. Uh, yes, in the end, you, although you have these wise friends, you will be black. And these lessons for him were important because he said, I can have my friends, my family is important. But then I saw how he created his relationship with himself to, to be successful. So in that way, I asked myself, what was the filmmaker trying to say with this, this, this man? Mm -hmm. Because for me, he was a very sympathetic boy trying to, to be himself and even trying to do your best. You you're scared, you risk yeah. that when you have a car, you can be killed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Subtle, but it was there. Yeah. So I thought that was also this layer, the, that, that part of it, you mentioned it for a moment. Yeah. I thought that also was, you know, like a little drop for everybody to think about. Yeah. To think about. A true masterpiece. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there are some questions still lingering. Uh, first you. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah. I was wondering about the way that you view the way uh, the boys are forced to grow up. So do you see it more like, oh, they are, um, it would actually be better for them to have more freedom and uh, time to actually live out their youth and skateboard and drink and experiment? Or do you feel that it's a good thing that they are confronted with their responsibility and uh, maybe it would actually be better to start with that sooner, like Kier's dad who is saying like, oh, you have to go to work, face up to your responsibility because you have to grow up in a little while. So I was wondering what how What would have helped these guys? More freedom or more discipline? Yes. Right? Yeah. For me? Well, for this question? Either way. For all of you. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I think that um, discipline is a very important part to grow up, uh, even for myself. If I, if I really want to gain something, if I, if I put something there and I want, to, if I want to reach my goals, I have to be disciplined. I'm, at this moment, I'm busy tr trying to write a book. And if, it's not if I'm not disciplined, it won't happen. I have all the freedom of the world. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not disciplined, and I think the way I think is not about more freedom or more discipline. For me, it's how do I relate to discipline? And how do I relate to freedom? And does the relation I have with discipline, does it help me to reach my goals? Does how do, the way I relate to freedom, does it help me to reach my goals? If I have too much freedom in my relationship with it, and I see I won't get there. And so I think in upbringing, when we talk about identity, I think, you know, when we talk about identity, we always want to talk about relating to your um, uh, cultural background or to the color of your skin. But for me, it's very important that we see that uh, we have to relate to everything that's there in our lives. So we also have to relate, for instance, if we look at Gisele, what, 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 the black guy? Kier. Kier. If we see at Kier, I see how he was trying to relate. Oh my God, now I'm a dishwasher. <laughs> but then you see that he gets, he gets, uh, he, he, it, it brings him somewhere. But then when he's there and when he promotes, then he looks at that and he, say, and he says, oh, I don't have to do that anymore. 
but we see that he took the responsibility to do that. So it's not this or that, but it's how do I relate to, in this case, your questions, or the things I'm doing, and my goals. There are two questions there. The okay. guy in blue. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> I will get to you with the mic, and I will hold it. <laughs> Uh, I have a question for uh, Fons um, about your song, actually, because I listen to it a lot, and I think that you really sing something that should be said sometimes. The, the uh, which song? Sorry. Uh, the song that you're going to sing. Jongens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I never dare to say that I'm not lucky or something like that. But I'm actually curious about uh, how serious are you with what you're saying, and do you think that this is being said enough? Well, I've always, if you, if you, you mean how serious is the chorus really? Is that your question? Yeah, that's the question. All right. Well, for, for I, I, I think of the chorus as, as, as something that goes through the mind of the main character. I know there are lines that I speak as though they're like grand, you know, these, these grand sort of, this, in this tradition of great, uh, pop slogans or like all you need is love or um but um I, I i think of it as i mean obviously i don't think that all men are losers so it's i mean and of course no it's it's kind of it's provocative but it i mean what, what i try to aim at is that moment that you feel like that that you feel like you're you're you are doomed by the very fact that you're i'm sure that I don't know, but I, I, I feel like sometimes a, a girl might feel that she's doomed because she, she's female. And I know for a fact that a lot of guys at some point in their life think I'm doomed because of my man. I'm, sa I'm, I'm basically because of the fact that I'm a man. There's, I'm, I'm being a man, sort of, it, 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 it's basically this whole set of notions that you have to adhere to and that you have to work for and you just don't you, know, just, you just don't want it and it also feels like just too much to ask it's like it's too much to ask to be an actual man you know and i feel like a lot of the, this is what i'm aiming at in the in the in the song it's basically a, a it's a boy thinking that and he's thinking like you know fuck this manhood because it's 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 it, it's puts this responsibility on it that we can never do it. So men are by default losers because if you think of yourself as a man and you have to win kind of this game of masculinity, then they are. Then I'm actually really serious. Then you're going to be a loser, you know? So that, that's kind of, I feel like, what I'm aiming at. But I'm not sure, you know? I mean, my song, songs are mysterious. Just because I wrote them doesn't mean they're not mysterious to me as well, you know? <laughs> do you know? <laughs> There was one other question in the um, uh, behind you. Where was the question? No. Okay. I thought I saw uh, one finger. Okay. It's um, it's past it's past, it's past, past. Uh, eleven thirty. Um, I think we should uh, grant Lucky Funds his last stand. Thank you very much for now. Thank Glenn you. Albert. Um uh, his, is a la uh, his word is the last one. One big applause for Absalini, who made this beautiful series. This is a Dutch song. It's a Dutch, Dutch song, and um, um, the character I was just talking about. This is like I made it up, but it was inspired by this boy, and uh, he he was kind of the age. He was kind of like a boy, like like these boys. They were like, you know like half boy, half man, and um, I saw this guy in a store where he was um, trying to. 
by like a bed or a duvet cover or something and um he was kind of bragging about his his girlfriend like it's like yeah my girl because my girlfriend is my girlfriend's that and he was being so like I, I felt like he was putting so much effort into trying to be like the guy who has a boyfriend who, who has a girlfriend that i thought like well this guy doesn't have a girlfriend at all he's like it's like it's like desperate to project that image, you know. If he'd actually have a girlfriend, then he wouldn't have been that desperate to project that image. Do you know what I mean? Reverse psychology. So, um, so that's the so that's the setup for the song. Right? <laughs> so this boy. Uh, he walks into a store and um, he says to the salesman, Hello, my near verkoper. I look for a bed. Want I go to the kamers wonen and I have a klein budget. Like in two persons, that like me a mooi begin. Doe er ook nog maar een kussen bij, dat is leuk voor mijn vriendin. Maar jongens hebben wensen en die worden nooit gehoord. Oh jongens zijn verliezers van het allerergste soort. Jongens zijn net meisjes, maar dan zonder geluk. Jongens zijn verliezers. Het zijn verliezers stuk voor stuk. En dat bed staat op zijn kamer. En dan loopt hij door de stad. En dan spreekt hij daar de meisjes aan. En dan kletst hij wat. Maar als hij dan hun nummer vraagt, dan zeggen ze telkens weer. Oh nee, geef mij jouw nummer maar, dan bel ik jou misschien wel een keer. Maar jongens hebben wensen en die worden nooit gehoord. Oh jongens zijn verliezers van het allerergste soort. Jongens zijn net meisjes, maar dan zonder geluk. Jongens zijn verliezers, het zijn verliezers stuk voor stuk. Op een ochtend wordt hij wakker, zoals gebruikelijk alleen. Wat is er toch mis met mij? Wat is mijn probleem? Er ligt een kleed over mijn spiegel en mijn klok is stilgezet. En vanavond is de laatste nacht in mijn eigen bed. Twintig dagen later is zijn bed verkocht aan een meisje dat op kamers ging en naar een bedje zocht. En haar haren zijn gekampt en haar wekker is gezet. En nooit kwam ze te weten van die jongen en dat bed, want jongens hebben wensen, maar die worden nooit gehoord. Oh, jongens zijn verliezers van het allerergste soort. Jongens zijn net meisjes, maar dan zonder geluk. Jongens zijn verliezers, het zijn verliezers stuk voor stuk. Ja, jongens zijn verliezers, het zijn verliezers stuk voor stuk. Iedereen. Jongens zijn verliezers, het zijn verliezers stuk voor stuk.